Welcome to another video from explainingthefuture.com and to my second report from a London 2014 3D print show. Last time I gave you an overview of the entire show and so this time I'm going to focus in a bit and just show you a few of the things that have really caught my attention. For me, the highlight of this year's 3D print show is the Stratasys Object 500 Connex 3. This is currently the only 3D printer that can build multi-material objects in colour and is based on a material jetting process called Polyjet. This creates object layers by spraying a photopolymer resin from an inkjet style printhead with the resin solidified with UV light before the next layer is added. The Object 500 Connex 3 has a triple jetting technology that allows it to output up to three base resins that include digital ABS, rubber-like and simulated polypropylene. These base resins can also be combined, so allowing up to 82 materials to be included in a single printout. As these sample prints illustrate, print quality is very high indeed. This particular sample also shows how different material properties can be achieved when the rubber-like and digital ABS materials are combined in different combinations to produce both hard and flexible parts, as well as variations in between. Another great 3D printer on display at the print show is the Form 1 Plus from Form Labs. Launched in June 2014, this also built objects from a photocurable resin, although in this instance uses a process called stereolithography. Here, a laser beam traces out and hardens each object layer on the surface of a vat of liquid photopolymer. The object is then raised slightly and recoated with resin before the next layer is printed. The Form 1 Plus's resolution and surface quality are excellent, and the printer is also twice as fast as the previous Form 1. At the other end of the size scale is the massive Big Rep 1. Launched in March 2014, this huge material extrusion 3D printer can print plastic objects up to 1.3 cubic metres in size. With this hardware, you could literally 3D print a table or a chair, although admittedly, they'd take several days to produce. Another impressive innovation is featured in the D3D1 Evo printers from Dynamo 3D. While these may look like typical desktop material extrusion machines, they feature revolutionary electronics from 3D printing technology provider Create It Real. This allows the D3D printers to print four times faster than hardware from rival manufacturers, with the speed achieved being very impressive indeed. In the new 3D print show kitchen, several exhibitors are showcasing the 3D printing of food. One of these is Choc Edge, who launched the world's first commercial food printer, the Choc Creator, back in 2012. Here at the print show, their second generation Choc Creator V2 is happily in operation and turning melted chocolate into a range of customised edibles. Also demonstrating food printing are Biflow. Their foldable hardware can be fitted with different heads to allow it to 3D print a wide range of materials, including Nutella chocolate spread. Similarly capable of being fitted with a cake mix or chocolate extruder is the Z-Morph 2. Another food printing pioneer is a Spanish research group called Robots in Gastronomy, who have developed the food form. This can extrude edible build materials onto any surface, including a hot grill or frying pan, or as here, an anti-griddle chilled to minus 30 degrees centigrade. Experimenting with the food form, robots in gastronomy have already managed to 3D print using bread and cookie doughs, chocolate, honey, cheese, ice cream, cheesecake and various frostings. Once again, the London 3D Print Show has provided a marvellous window on the world of 3D printing. For more information on 3D printing, why not look at explainingthefuture.com or you could watch my other Explaining the Future 3D printing videos or of course you could read my 3D printing books. But now that's it for this time and I hope to talk to you again very soon. <laughs>